Hey everyone, welcome to week 71. Today is day three, Wednesday, and this is our week uh, that we've decided to call the essence of drawing. So we are trying to gauge how a second layer of drawing compares to an initial layer where I'm very expressive with paint. So let's see how we do. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is day three. This is our third day on our comeback week our week that we've decided to call the essence of drawing. That title seems a little ambitious, but what we've been trying to do, and it's good if we do a small recap on our first two days, is to evaluate the relationship between the decisions we make when we react, you know, in that first layer of painting, and we are very expressive with our brush strokes, with a second layer where we try to emphasize a more traditional understanding of drawing. So there's going to be a lot of line work, if you will, on that second layer. And what we're trying to identify is how that imposition of drawing, because at times it does feel kind of like imposing, how that reintroduction of drawing may feel strange to that painting. It may emphasize a lot of things that are sort of dormant in a painting, but it also runs the risk of being iterative. So what I'm trying to see, and I guess this is a week more so than other weeks, where I'm not really interested in the final painting. I am aware of what the image is going to look like, so there is an acknowledgement on my part to say, okay, I want to take this image this far and I'm going to stop at this point because I find it interesting, but I also find it pleasing. So I do comprehend that final stage of that image as a conclusion of my exercise. I, I want to make that clear. I'm not going to leave a painting just be, even though I don't usually do this with paintings. Like I said on Monday, this is what I would consider a stage in my painting process. So after I reevaluate those first expressive strokes, that first layer where I'm very reactive in my painting, after I try to find my way again and I recalibrate the painting with the aid of my drawing, I would then use the information that my drawing is providing me with and reassess the painting. I would then try to paint on top of that drawing to hopefully redirect the painting and solidify the teachings that the layer of drawing has now provided me with. So it is not usual that I would leave my paintings at this particular stage, but for the sake of this exercise and for the sake of, you know, me having a heightened sense of awareness of the relationship between that second layer, you know, that layer of drawing reassessment, let's call it, and that initial layer where I react, for the sake of me understanding the dynamics between those two, I'm going to let the painting be. I'm going to leave the painting at this stage. And even if it bothers me, even if I realize that my initial brushstrokes speak about one thing and then the second layer of drawing speaks about another thing, I kind of want that. And I know that seems a little bit strange because, you know, I'm also noticing that one layer can point out very visibly how the other layer was just way off the mark. So my second layer of drawing is indicating to me how off I was when I was trying to be overly expressive, when I was trying to react very emotionally with that first moment of the painting. So it's kind of cool. I don't want to say that the drawing, that second stage, that second layer of the painting is a path towards correctness. Now, this is not solely about correcting the uh, drawing that may have been sort of displaced when I decided to put all my efforts into trying to be overly expressive with that first layer of painting. I don't think it's about saying, oh, this was off and let me just adjust it. Not really, because I think that in my paintings, there are tons of times where things are just really, really off. And it never bothers me. There are many times where I just look at it, you know, the rational side of my brain says, oh, that's very off. But then when I take a step back, not literally, but when my mind kind of takes a step back and looks, I kind of grant myself the ability to encounter and seize those possibilities. 
And when I look at everything with distance, I tell myself, that's actually pretty good. That's actually really cool. I'm going to keep it. I don't want to seem like I'm complacent with myself, but I'm usually very excited with what I get with distortions. And very rarely, very, very rarely, I'll be like, whoa, I was way, way off. I need to be far more disciplined. And I kind of scold myself and I tell myself, come on, you're getting a little too cheeky with these uh, distortions. Go back to uh, that responsible drafts person that you are. I don't usually do that. And it's not that I'm trying to avoid the responsibility that's inherent to uh, drawing. No, it's just that I, I feel that drawing is a tool. It's a wonderful tool. It's a very powerful tool. And if I'm able to use it to emphasize something that I sensibly encounter when I'm having this dialogue with painting, then of course I'm going to leave it. There's going to be a side of my brain that says, whoa, that is off. But then immediately I kind of fight back and say, okay, it, yes, it is off. It may be off. But the reason it is off is because I'm trying to push this. I'm trying to emphasize this. I'm trying to let the viewer know that this was something that moved me and it moved me to this extent. To me, that's like a perfect, perfect way to put yourself to test. You know, you're asking yourself questions and it's good that you kind of dig in deep and try to find answers to those questions and answers that are satisfying. You're not just trying to pat yourself on the back. You're not just trying to give whatever simple answer you can come up with. No, no, no. You're trying to be sincere with yourself. You're really trying to be honest about this painting that you're trying to solve. So I think that the dueling character of this encounter of having these two separate stages of painting now almost clashing with each other is something that I find incredibly, incredibly interesting. Like I said, let's do a small recap of the um, two paintings that we've already done. Painting on Monday, we decided to do something that is not kind of common, I would say, with the uh, paintings that I've solved during this project, which is that I did my version, I'm going to say, of a very simple exercise of modeling form. I said it on Monday, but I'm going to say it again. I'm not the best at slowly modeling form. I'm not. You can clearly tell. I think that that's plain and obvious to see when you look at me kind of struggling through trying to model a painting. I don't know exactly why it's very difficult for me to paint that way. Uh, it probably goes hand in hand with the fact that I really enjoy going from big to small. And I really love trying to block in a painting with big brush strokes, just, you know, very gestural marks. And from there, then trying to identify how I can break up those smaller shapes without sacrificing that bigger idea of the whole. So for me, starting from the smaller shapes just seems kind of backwards. It, it goes against the nature of how I have identified how I sensibly react through painting. So there is that sort of technical aspect, that technical little hurdle that I have to um, try and overcome when I'm trying to these smaller forms of painting. But it's not an excuse. It is what it is. Not one of my strengths, not one of my fortitudes. But I did it just so that the painting felt a little more resolved in that first layer so that when I introduced that second layer of drawing, it would seem unnecessary, or at least it would spring that question in our mind where it's like, do we really need this? I mean, aside from the fact that we need to adjust a little bit our drawing, do we really need to go this far? You know, do we really need to put all those marks down again so that we can start painting anew? You know, do we really, really feel the need to have all those marks on top of that first layer of paint? As I've been saying, I think that the nature of those drawing marks can be fascinating in the sense that they can clear a lot of things that were very cloudy. You know, drawing has this power to very quickly make things visible. And if we were lacking clarity, drawing can actually ground everything and just make every single aspect of the image that we were producing very easy to read, very easy to understand. That is if the drawing is accurate, or at least if the drawing is close to what we intended to produce. So I acknowledge the power that drawing has. 
But I also feel that sometimes it may clash with the more subtle, kind of more invisible sense of drawing that is very much so present in decision making through brushstrokes. Because that initial layer, even though it's modeling, even though it has like smaller strokes of painting, even though there's a lot of moving paint around so that we can understand form three-dimensionally, even though there's not super evident brushstrokes, there is still an identity of drawing in those strokes, in the placement of those masses of color. It is in there. It is part of painting. You cannot separate it from painting. You cannot dissect it from your brush marks. That definition of drawing, the drawing that is quite alive in all those painted decisions, is quite different sensibly from the drawing mark. And that's why I called it like an imposed drawing mark. This drawing mark that we want to invoke and then we force it upon that layer of painting. Do we really need it? I don't know. I think the question that we have for this week is one that only us can answer. I could tell you right now that in the many paintings that I've done where I have done this sort of exercise, I don't know if it has to do with the painting needing something, with the painting asking something from me. No, I need it because I'm lost, because I really feel that it was great reacting in that first layer of paint, but I feel insecure in that second layer. I feel that if I don't have a sort of safety net underneath me, maybe that painting is going to feel slippery. A lot of decisions that I've already made in that first layer, I'm just going to repeat them and it's not going to feel like the painting is progressing, but it's just going to feel like, you know, putting paint on top and paint on top. And I don't know if you guys have this feeling, but I've certainly been in those places where you have a base layer of paint, you have a really nice first layer, and when you decide to tackle that second layer of paint, you kind of feel that you work for hours and you feel that all you're doing is just a repetition of that first layer of paint and the painting didn't move an inch. We didn't try to push it towards any direction and it just stood still painfully still. There's nothing more frustrating than realizing that you've worked for hours on a painting and nothing has happened. Absolutely nothing. I mean, it's probably even worse than that first layer because at least that first layer was very expressive. And now that second layer becomes such a redundant second layer of paint that even our first decisions, those very attractive gestural marks that we were able to achieve on that first moment that first encounter with the painting, they have all been watered down, they have all been covered up, and we have lost the character that we once had on that painting. So that is very, very painful, very frustrating. I'm sure that we've all been there. And for me, many times, I just feel that maybe that first paint layer wasn't enough. Yes, I was being reactive, I was being expressive, but perhaps I just left everything so open that the painting is still very much up in the air. And sometimes I feel comfortable with that. And there are other times where I'm like, no, I actually need more information in my painting because I know that if I don't have that, then I'm going to be lost for hours and hours and hours during the painting. And I don't like that feeling. So what do I do? I just invoke drawing. Again, drawing in its simplest technical terms, which is I need a tool, in my case, a rigger brush, a lining brush, to help me do fine marks so that I can almost like separate those two layers and make them so different in nature that now I can sense what I was trying to do at those two very different moments. And I find that that third layer that I do is where I say, okay, let me try and now create a conversation between these two. Let me try and find a middle point where all the information that I have now, that reassessment alongside that initial evidence of expression, let me see if I can put those two together and end up with a painting that can be disciplined yet very emotional, very sensible. That has always been my end goal. I think that all the paintings that I find incredible throughout history have those two things. It's not just tackling a painting and going absolutely crazy expressive. I mean, I like those paintings. I actually really like those paintings. But when it comes to understanding myself as a painter, I like balance. 
I really do feel that I like balance. Whenever I look at a painting, I mean, there are very bold paintings throughout our history, and I appreciate those paintings, but when I look at a painting, I want to feel struggle. I want to feel the human being that's behind the painting where there is commitment behind the decisions, but there is also doubt. I love that. I love that. I think that that's what makes a painting human for me. So I think on, on Monday's painting, we were able to ask ourselves that question, you know, was it important? Was it absolutely relevant to have this layer of drawing or was it just a bit too iterative? Even though the nature of, you know, that definition of drawing was quite different from stage one to stage two. Now, yesterday's painting, I think was... A very interesting painting because I tried to leave that first layer a bit more open. So I didn't model form as much as I did on Monday. So a lot of things are quote unquote unresolved. And I did that for a reason because I wanted to see if the openness in painting just invites a little bit more that specificity that you can get in that second layer of drawing. And as always, because I think this happens constantly, um, I found that I had tons of discrepancies between the initial layer of paint and my second layer of drawing. There are a lot of things that are off with that first layer of paint. And while I was drawing on my second layer, I was trying to balance everything out. I was trying to say, okay, this is what we have, but this is what we have to adjust. It was very interesting having something a bit more open but that was still open to receive all these suggestions that I would do with that second layer of drawing. So very, very interesting. I actually really appreciate the result that I got from that second layer of paint. And I think that there is a, a very nice communication, a very nice sort of dynamic between first and second layer. Now for today, we're doing something a little bit different because there is a very expressive first layer of paint one in which I would have been completely comfortable just saying, okay, this is where I'm gonna leave that painting. It's just a very sketchy, very gestural layer of paint. It is based off of a famous photograph of Picasso with his dog Lump. And I just found that photo super whimsical and really nice. And I thought it was a perfect excuse to do this exercise. And I was asking myself, okay, if that first layer of paint is about open gesture, how is that tighter drawing that we put on that second layer going to feel, is it gonna feel sort of iterative and maybe not as necessary, like on that first painting that we did on Monday, is it gonna have like a sort of a nicer conversation where it completes and it fills up the voids like it did uh, yesterday? How's it gonna compare with those two? And I think, I think it clashes a little bit. So we've had something that uh, felt somewhat iterative on Monday. We have a nice conversation where it can complement the paint layer like we did yesterday. And today, I think it clashes quite a bit. I think first layer and drawing, they want to go towards different directions. And it's very interesting how we kind of have to fight to try to keep them together. But I think they are held together by, you know, spit and a prayer. It's not a very solid painting in that sense, but I love having that relationship. That's why we're calling this week like Essence of Drawing because we're trying to see how the same exercise, the exact same exercise may produce very different paintings and the effect of that second layer can be incredibly different depending on the nature and the character of that first layer of paint. That is what we're trying to gauge during this week. That's what we're trying to evaluate, which to me is super, super interesting. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for hanging out. Again, both Danny and I are super happy to be back. We miss you guys, and we are going to see you tomorrow where we're going to try to do something a little bit different, and we're going to see how the nature of this drawing, the essence of this drawing, may differ from the results we've had on the past three days. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for hanging out. Bye.